In this video, we're gonna look at a classic and very important result known as the monotone sequence theorem. But before we do that, let's recall some things. So we say that a sequence a n converges to L, which is not equal to plus or minus infinity. So this is a finite limit. If for every epsilon bigger than zero, there is a natural number capital N, such that if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, we have a n minus L in absolute value is less than epsilon. So what that means is no matter how small of a number we pick, we wanna think about epsilon as being super, super small, we can find a point in the sequence after which every member of that sequence is very, very close to L. It is within epsilon of L. Okay, great. And then we also proved earlier that every convergent sequence is bounded. Um, and so today we wanna to look at the notion of a monotone sequence and then prove this fact that a monotone sequence converges if and only if it is bounded. So let's say we've got a sequence a n. We say that it's monotonically increasing if a n plus one is bigger than or equal to a n for all n natural numbers. So in other words, it's getting bigger as you move forward and notice, this is a non-strict increasing, so it could be a constant sequence. Some authors would put a strict inequality there, but we'll just stick with that one. Okay, and then we say that it's monotonically decreasing if a n plus one is less than or equal to a n for all n natural numbers. Okay, great, and like I said, we wanna prove the monotone sequence theorem, which is an if and only if statement. It says that if you've got a monotone sequence a sub n, it converges if and only if it is bounded. So let's go ahead and see this proof. And what we're gonna first do is this forward direction, but we're gonna use the contrapositive in the forward direction. So in other words, we're going to suppose that it's not bounded and argue that it cannot converge. So let's suppose that A sub N is not bounded. But if a sub n is not bounded, we know that it does not converge because in a previous video, we proved that every convergent sequence was bounded. So we can just immediately write that down. So it does not converge. Notice if it did converge, then we could use this statement to prove that it was bounded, but we assume that it was not bounded. So that would give you a contradiction. So you can do this kind of with the contrapositive or with the contradiction. But regardless of how you do it, the proof is pretty quick. Okay, great. So now the other direction is a little bit more lengthy. So I wanna start from a clean board. Okay, so now we're gonna go in the other direction. So we wanna suppose that we have a monotone sequence that is bounded. So let's go ahead and suppose that a n is monotonically increasing, and we'll do the increasing case. It will be very, very similar to do the decreasing case. So I'll leave it to you guys to check that. So let's say that it's increasing and bounded and I should say maybe above here, but that's pretty clear that if it's monotonically increasing, then the important bounding happens above, not below. Now I wanna consider a set built out of this sequence. And so that set will just simply contain every element from the sequence. So I'm just gonna write this as a sub one, a sub two, all the way up, a sub n, and then we keep going. So notice that is a subset of the real numbers. Furthermore, it is a bounded subset. So let's go ahead and write that down. It's a bounded subset of R. And I should say it's bounded above. But by the completeness axiom, we know that every subset of the real numbers which is bounded above has a least upper bound. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have by completeness, it has a least upper bound. Great, and remember we usually call that the supremum. So let's just go ahead and set A equal to that supremum of A1 up to AN. <clears throat> okay, great. And now what we'll do, well, we need a little bit more room, but that supremum ends up being the limit of our sequence. So on the last board, we took our sequence and we created a set of real numbers that was bounded above. 
And so what that means is it had a least upper bound, we called that A. So in other words, A is the supremum of this set A1, A2, and so on and so forth. So now what we want to do is make the claim that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to a. In other words, this supremum of this set is actually the limit of our sequence. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. And so we're obviously going to use this epsilon n definition of our limit. So let's say that we're given epsilon bigger than zero, and we want to notice that a minus epsilon is less than a, and it's strictly less than a given the fact that epsilon is bigger than zero. But what that tells us is that a minus epsilon is not an upper bound of our set a n, where that is built by the sequence. And how do we know it's not an upper bound? Because if it were an upper bound, it would contradict the fact that A is the least upper bound. So what that tells us is that there exists some N, which I'll call capital N, in the natural numbers, such that capital A minus epsilon is less than this A sub capital N, but that's less than or equal to capital A. So let's talk our way through that. So we know that A minus epsilon is not an upper bound, but that means we can find an element from this set that is larger than A minus epsilon. So that's exactly what we've done with this A sub N. And then we know that A sub N is less than or equal to A, given the fact that A is an upper bound for our set. Okay, great. But now what we want to notice is since the sequence a n is increasing, we have a sub little n is bigger than or equal to a sub capital N if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N. Because our sequence gets larger as we move further into the sequence. And if this little n is further into the sequence than this capital N, then this a sub n is bigger than the a sub capital N. Okay, great. But that tells us the following inequality is true. So we have a minus epsilon is going to be strictly less than a sub capital N, which is less than or equal to a sub little n. But then again, since a is an upper bound for the sequence, that's going to be less than or equal to capital A. But because epsilon is bigger than zero, that is strictly less than a plus epsilon. So now let's zero in on the following portions of this inequality. We have a minus epsilon here, we have a sub n here, and we have a plus epsilon here. And then we've got a strict inequality here and a strict inequality here. So now we can put all of that together and see that we have a minus epsilon is less than a n, which is less than a plus epsilon. And that's true for all n bigger than or equal to this capital N. But now what we can do is change this inequality until we have it in the following form. Notice this is the same thing as minus epsilon is less than a sub n minus a, which is less than plus epsilon. We can change that compound inequality into an inequality involving an absolute value. That is equivalent to the absolute value of a sub n minus capital A is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Notice we started with an arbitrary epsilon. We found a capital N such that if little n was bigger than or equal to capital N, A sub n minus capital A was less than epsilon once those were in absolute values, which is exactly what we needed to do to show that this limit of the sequence was equal to A. Okay, so that's a good place to stop. In a future video, we'll do a bunch of examples where we apply the monotone sequence theorem.